morning, everybody. I just want to thank uh, Milton and VC for inviting me here. So I'm not a healthcare provider. Uh, I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn, you know, so I don't have the, the medical uh, degree here. Um, but we do make smart glasses and devices that connect to everything that's in the operating room, all the smart stuff, the sensors, uh, that information. So it's uh, pretty exciting stuff going on in, in, in the world of smart glasses. Um, so a little bit about Vuzix. Uh, we're not a startup. We've been around for 22 years. We're actually a public company, probably the only uh, smart glasses kind of public company. If you want to count Google, you can do that, but that's not the, their primary business. Uh, we work with companies like Verizon, Eaton. Uh, we're in about 40% of the Fortune 100 companies. Uh, we have north of 2,000 customers. A lot of these are in the enterprise space, so it could be uh, remote field service, could be picking and packing. Uh, in our operations, we have about uh, maybe 110 countries that we ship product into today. Uh, and the two products we make are actually made in the USA, uh, believe it or not. So this is where things began, 2011. These are real headsets. These aren't science projects. These are actual products that people, you know, tried to sell to others. Um, five to, five to $15,000 a, a product, you know, they weigh pounds. Um, pretty hard to imagine folks, you know, actually wearing these uh, at home, at their jobs, really anywhere. Um, form factor really, you know, doesn't make this a real product. 2013, Google announced uh, Google Glass. We kind of joke, don't be a glass hole. You know, um, people, <laughs> people really kind of revolted on this. Um, but I think there's a lot of pros. I mean, a lot of people, who's heard of Google Glass before? So it makes my job a little easier. We're not Google. We don't make Google Glass. We do make products that work, though. <laughs> so did Google fail? I'm going to say no. Um, what's the, what was their primary objective? What did they fail to do? To solve something. So they created a product that had you know, kind of a, a worldwide appeal, but really no defined use case. Um, and you think it, it brought a lot of you know, action and investment into the enterprise space. So a lot of companies like, hey, this is it. This is the next big thing. We're going we're gonna to start building, developing things. And what's happened over the years, the last five, six years, you've seen a ton of investment, and that continues to happen. Companies that are moving from mobile platforms uh, into smart classes, seeing this as the next big thing. Um, and I don't think that's hype. I really think it's reality. Uh, but it takes a little bit for, for new devices to really gain traction. So where are we today? That little red today, that's us. And this is investment in the billion. So five zero zero be five billion dollars. They expect you know this year to be about three billion dollars invested into enterprise space. Uh, that's jumping to thirty billion by 2022. And I think you know a lot of the times you look at industry forecasts and you know these guys are crazy. But if I look at some of the reasons why you know this is what we're seeing in our business, we're seeing folks getting through the ROIs, getting through HR, IT, and all those folks doing things. So we see this curve happening in our business and our pipeline. Um, and I think the medical industry is kind of an untapped area. And I think one of the, one of the challenges here is that if you've gone back in time, the, f the phone is super powerful today. And the glasses, if you look at the Google Glass, the first product, it was only a fraction of the phone. So people want that same performance and that same um, result. And what, what I'm seeing and what we're seeing is that the, the glasses are becoming more and more powerful to the point where they're maybe a half a gen or a gen away from the leading phones today, but you're getting into a small form factor. So performance-wise, you're able to do high K, you know, high resolution video and really perform functions that you couldn't do prior. So again, these things have become more powerful. Uh, form factors, you got a lot of different products out there. Some of them are still big and look like science projects. Uh, a recent company looked like a Spaceballs helmet. Again, they're, they're real products, uh, maybe not designed for, for the health industry, um, but there's some good ones out there. And this is kind of an example. You know, I'm not, I'm not in the operator room. Hopefully, I don't have to go into one. I mean, something bad's happening to me, but, um, you know, these are all the sensors and all the information that's in there. And these all could be put into a headset where you're, somebody's performing surgery, they get their vitals. Uh, it could be off to the side, it could be, could be there. You know, we talk about this augmented intelligence. You know, AR is the same thing. You know, as, as things get smarter, you could program it to tell you what the stitch size should be, and all that stuff could be done with the glasses with a camera. 
So there's a lot of use cases and, and benefits and, and possibilities here. Uh, we do have a, a doctor that's using our products and he's doing teaching. Um, I forget what country he's in. I think he's in uh, an Asia Pacific area, but he's doing teaching kind of across the globe and he uses our glasses to stream um, teaching other students, you know, how to perform surgery. So this stuff's happening today. Um, and we look at this as the fifth, fifth generation of computers. You started with the, the desktop, the laptop, the phone, the tablet. We think glasses are going to be the fifth generation of computing. Um, and what's nice, too, are these things have everything, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the speakers, microphones, I mean, you name it. It has all the stuff that's in your phone, but it's in a small wearable kind of format. And I think what's powerful is that point of view. I don't know if he was, who has kids here, anybody? Has anybody tried to like record their, their son or daughters, you know, trying to score a goal or, you know, a play and you're getting all excited and you, you look at the video and you're jumping up and down and the, the feed's just all over the place. Well, imagine having that in the operating room. We have that point of view with the glasses. You're wearing them, but you're able to actually see what you're seeing. You're able to record what you're actually watching. It's not a distraction. You're just getting that point of view, and that's a powerful thing. It's powerful in everyday life. It's also powerful in healthcare. And then what's also nice, you have you know, partners like VC that have HIPAA compliant software. So this enables folks to connect, use the devices securely, uh, and stream video, high quality video. Uh, we have some partners actually in Europe, they've deployed over 100 systems and they're, they're doing a few, a few things. Um, there's some patients that can't leave their homes or they can't leave their facility. They're actually having a, a, a provider go to the zoo, go to a, a play, and they're watching through the eyes of them through the glasses. So they can't, ex they can't experience the zoo, but they're able to get that same feeling like they're there. They're also using it for telemedicine, so they're, they're seeing patients remotely, having the nurse practitioner wear the devices, and then they're streaming. Um, the doctor's able to service more patients uh, in a day, and, and just it's a better type of healthcare. The other thing that's nice, if you want to do recording, we have devices now that have, they can do 4K video at 30 frames per second. So this is, again, I don't, my, my cell phone doesn't have it. These are leading devices that just, they're high-end technology. So the Grey's Anatomy, I think that's a, you know, I guess it shows on season 16, believe it or not. I stopped watching probably at season eight, but um, that's how I learned my, a lot of my medical is, you know, seeing that teaching ability and being able to push that to the, the big screen. This is what technology can do, whether it's in the, in the back room or across the world. You can share this information everywhere. That's pretty much it from uh, the presentation. I'm open to questions. Hello, Paul Rashid, psychiatrist. Thank you. Uh, I have a lot of interest in this space, and I'm just curious. I know with some products, they require contact lenses, et cetera. Will, uh, do your products require any additional thing besides a physical glass? So the product on the left, that's our blade. Uh, that one actually you can build in with prescription inserts. So we have a, a company we partner with. You can get the scripts, and you can build those in. The one on the right, those are made either with uh, a wireless frame they can go on safety glasses, also a medical headband. So from a healthcare perspective, you can wear your existing glasses and they'll go right uh, in front of them. Uh, you can put them to a headband. You can, you can wear a helmet if you wanted to as well. Hello? Okay. Hi, I'm Paula Mudo. I'm uh, CEO of UberDoc, and I'm also a surgeon uh, and a vascular surgeon. And I am fascinated by your um, saying how you can teach people I see that as being in the operating room and getting an intraoperative consultation from a colleague. When you, if you can look at something that you're not sure what it is, a tumor, for example, or some type of a weird anatomy, and to be able to plug into a network of people that could just get a ping and put on their computers and say, oh, hey, wait, that's interesting. I mean, that has huge potential. You can use uh, software like VC to actually make that connection as well. But no, th I mean, that, that's really it. It's, it's taking the, the power of one and bringing it to many. So whether it's for training or just, you know, collective surgery, you can annotate, you can circle something, you can hone in on anything. Hey, I see something that's abnormal. Um, it's a way to kind of bring knowledge from, you know, we call it the tribal, the expert. And in, in the field, we have the person you sent the grunt in, the grunt in to disarm the bomb and then 
you know, the guy that knows what he's doing sitting in the comfy office in air conditioning. It's the same thing. I mean, you can grab the, all the collective knowledge of professionals and, and share that information in a non-obtrusive way that doesn't get in the way of surgery. Hi, I'm Jawad Apollo. Have you had to deal with any medical legal issues surrounding that uh, smart eyeglasses? Like for a surgeon operating? Uh, you know, we, are, you t are you talking more about the, uh, some people ask about does it impact the eyes or, or that type of thing? No, I mean, we've, we have hundreds in the field to, in the medical space, and we haven't heard anything uh, in that regard. Matt, thank you so much.